Watching us instead of the Rosetta Press Conference that uh, just got delayed to about now. Um, I <laughs> got, uh, we have hellos from Nancy. He says, Happy Filet Landing Day. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Mm. Uh, filet. I was wondering that. How do you pronounce it? I've only been reading the tweets. I haven't actually. Right, I know. I haven't heard it. I haven't heard anyone say it. Oh, and you know, hello, happy comet stabbing day. Yes, as far as I know, Pamela Gay did come up with that one. She's been pushing the comet stabbing uh, hashtag. Mm -hmm. uh, and Elad just got home from 12 hours of studying math at the university. So thank you for joining us after that uh, marathon session. Uh, and indeed, as Guido mentions on the event page, if anyone is um, going to be watching the media coverage instead, if you would uh, keep us updated in the comments, we'd appreciate that as well. I'm Nicole Gucci. My lower third's broken. This is, this is Georgia Bracey, through the wall. Wow, my lower third works. Okay. My lower third works. Hi. My <laughs> so uh, welcome to this week's Learning Space. Um, since our regular broadcast time happened to be on the day that humanity landed on a comet for the first time, we thought we would, uh, first of all, give you guys some updates, although I'm pretty sure we're all on the same page right now. We haven't gotten any updates for a little while. Uh, as far as we know, um, Filet has landed. Uh, however, the harpoons did not deploy it as expected, and so we are waiting to hear back about its stability. I know that between the harpoons and the um, the harpoons and the um, the thruster on the top that I forgot the name of, uh, those will be keeping it on the surface of, uh, I'm not going to say the name of the comet, 67P. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not going to try. Um, I haven't practiced. Um, so I've been following some of this uh, this morning, even uh, through teaching and uh, and uh, through my doctor's appointment, so I, I, I got allergy testing, which you can't really see anymore. Um, and yeah, so the the spacecraft weighs uh, fill a lander weighs the equivalent of a one gram mass would on Earth. Uh, so that's why you have to worry about uh, harpoons and uh, thrusters and things like that to actually stick to the surface. So um, we I will be watching the the Twitter stream while we're uh, talking here. Uh, and hopefully screen share the uh, new images as they come up in the press conference. So, Georgia, how, how how has your morning been? Have you been watching as well? I wish I could have been. Um, I've you been look like you're in meetings all day. Meetings, so <laughs> that's, that's not a good thing when you want to keep up with what's going on in the outside world. But still, um, that's why we have these wonderful little events and hangouts, and I have you right next door so I can yell over and say, hey, what's new? So, um, so I am also looking forward to kind of catching up on, on all the news. Um, been looking a little bit here and there, looking a little on um, Google Plus and trying to catch up. And so I did see the thing about the harpoon not, not working quite as expected. I thought I saw something about are there screws that are supposed to... There are also screws on the legs which will help it grip to the surface. Yeah, and those... I thought were okay, right? Yeah, I like they were okay, but I haven't, again, I haven't seen an update on those in particular yeah, I th a little bit, so. So I kind of hopped around trying to get a few things here and there, but I've not been able to devote any attention to it, sure. unfortunately, so I'll catch up. Yeah, so um, the Twitter, you know, my Twitter feed's been full of it. Hashtag comment landing has been full of everybody's celebrations. Uh, I have particularly been paying attention to Emily Lakdawalla's Twitter feed from the Planetary Society because she always has some of the best live spacecraft coverage out there. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe she's on the BBC radio right now talking about yeah. uh, the spacecraft um, and also watching the Twitter <laughs> live stream while that's going on. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's see. Uh, I just got sidetracked by my own brain. Um, so we have a couple of activities uh, for you guys to uh, talk about some about Rosetta. Um, 
Uh, we've got some educational activities. I've put links to them in the Showcase app. I've also put a link to the webcomic XKCD because they have... Uh, Randall Monroe's been... Um, yeah, d live reporting the entire landing through comics. And it's really cute. And uh, uh, someone by the name of Tanya Harrison uh, has put them together in a GIF, which I, I wasn't able to put in the Showcase app, but I'll throw that on the event page. She's making a, a moving GIF of each of the comic panels of the XK City, so it runs like a little movie. Uh, so I will, I will put that up. In fact, I might even screen share that. Um, uh, Elad said, I'm, I'm, check, I'm looking at the other comment stream. Elad said, to be fair, I didn't catch a word my professor said during the last two hours because I was glued to my Twitter feed on the live updates. <laughs> Don't feel bad. I was teaching for two hours and... <laughs> and still managed to be glued to the Twitter feed. I, I, um, so they were, they were doing... An, um, it's an inquiry-based class. They do the activity, and I walk around and kind of check on their progress. Um, but every once in a while, I would check, and I'd put up on the display for them. Look, guys, here's the latest image from the comic landing. So I was distracting them from the work I gave them, which probably wasn't very fair of me, but it's science happening right now. So Yeah, no, those are those teachable moments they always tell us about, that you have to stop everything and say, hey, this is really so cool because it doesn't happen every day, and we're going to learn a whole bunch of cool things from this. Yeah. It's live, it's real, it's, yeah, human beings going out there and Learning something new. So, what did your did your students have any reactions to this? Or they thought it was pretty cool. So, oh, I'm uh, talking, I'm screen sharing the XKCD GIF um, from you can see the URL up yeah. there. Uh, and <laughs> um, yeah, I was I was giving them real basic overview. I mean, it, we were talking about energy, uh, which is a very general topic. Look at the little. <laughs> Uh, so we really weren't touching, we really don't touch on space stuff in this class. It's mostly physics and earth science. Uh, but we did talk a little bit about, I just, you know, told them generally briefly what the mission is. Here's what's happening right now. Uh, and then I got to show them the picture of the lander that um, this Rosetta spacecraft took when that, when that came up live. So that was pretty cool. Because uh, uh, it was happening now. Um, so what you guys are seeing, like I said, is the XKCD comic. So Randall Monroe has been live Comicking? I don't know if it's. I know. A what do you call that? <laughs> Live comicking. Uh, landing. So that's been pretty. That's, cool. Oh, that's great. Uh, so <laughs> check that out on XKCD um, and go through all of them. Um, one activity I'm working on right now. Um, it is a, a more of a craft. And George and I have been sitting here crafting <laughs> for the yeah, last. Mine's kind of a craft too, in a way. Yeah. So um, there is a little paper model, model of Rosetta and uh, the Philae lander. And so I, uh, I'm going to be working on this a little. I've started cutting it out, so I, I cut it. I uh, had uh, Dawn, thank you Dawn, print this out because she is a color printer and I don't uh, on, on cardstock. So I'm cutting the, cutting the pieces out and going to try and put together a, uh, a spacecraft and a lander uh, while we're talking. Um, Georgia, do you want to go ahead and show uh, your activity? I can start with mine, sure. So I just I also want to say, so sort of the theme here is models, mm -hmm. which we want to get education-y for just a minute, um, is a very important um, piece in science education. And the new science standards for the United States, the next-gen science standards, um, touch on this quite a bit. It's one of the scientific and engineering practices that students need to be familiar with and need to practice, and that is developing and using models. So we've all got different kinds of models. Um, we actually walk around with models in our head. There's mental models of things. So the idea of modeling is actually pretty familiar, but we don't always talk about some key parts of models. and. Two of them we're going to talk about today a little bit, and one that students should know. One is that models have limitations. So no model is perfect. All models uh, do some things well and other things not so well. And actually, kids have kind of fun picking apart models and saying, you know, well, that's not right. That's not how that really works. And, and all models have that. So you kind of have to pick and choose what works for what you want to do with your model. So there's that part of modeling. 
to bring out with students and also that models are kind of iterative so models change so we have a model that we think works pretty good and then wow you know we find out new stuff and so then we have to go back and say well we need to tweak this model a little bit we need to make this change and then you know there we go we have a slightly modified model which is even better and that process can just continue on and on and on so models aren't static they get evaluated and they get tweaked as new evidence comes to light and so that's a really important part of using models too so um, teachers should be bringing that out with their students um, as they're playing around with models so when I was looking for one today I went to NASA Wavelength which we've talked a lot about before and I know Nicole is throwing a link out there somewhere for this activity um, this is called Comet on a Stick so right away and I have to undo some of it because people have been talking about stabbing <laughs> so this actually um, has a stabby part to it so this is the stick you can of course use just about anything you want for a stick because like many great astronomy activities it involves a styrofoam ball and a stick so um, most people have some form of those things around and but you know with students of course you don't want to get too stabby so be careful about how pointy your stick is. Now I have to re-stab my comment. I muted myself because I'm giggling while I'm cutting. <laughs> so mine's of course already kind of completed because I was playing around with it today. But the idea for this activity is it's um, really good for like fourth through eighth grade, but it can of course be modified up or down, and good teachers can always do that. Um, and it's very user friendly. Um, apart from the stabby stick and the styrofoam ball, you can use just about anything and everything for this activity. And you're creating a model of a comet. So you first, of course, put the stick into the styrofoam ball and you have the basis of it. But then what you would do in a classroom with this is get your students into groups and tell them that they are going to make a model of a comet. They've got some basic stuff they can use, but they have to decide what their model is going to be good at showing. So there's lots of things models can show. They can show um, the composition of something. They can show the shape. They can show something about how it forms, where it forms, if we're talking comets here, something about its orbit. Um, what color is it? How does it affect the Earth? So there's a lot to learn about comets and most models will probably only be good at showing a few of those things. So the students have to decide that. Um, but one thing they all can do is, as you will see, I have these lovely streamers on my comet. Um, everybody should put streamers on their comet and that will be a model of one particular interesting comet feature. So depending on, of course, how much you've talked about comets, um, your students may or may not know that comets have two kinds of tails. Um, this can demonstrate one kind of tail for the comet, and we'll get to the demo part in a second. So basically what I've got here is a styrofoam ball on a stick with in my case, um, so the activity says to use some ribbons, you can use um, mylar streamers. Um, again, get creative and resourceful, whatever you have. I happen to have in my office some old tissue paper from wrapping presents, and so I just ripped those into little streamers. That works great too, whatever you've got. And then, so my model is going to show something about the tail of a comet at least one kind of tail. And then I also found in my drawer um, an old plastic bag because I thought, you know, to show the shape of a comet, comets aren't round. So especially with our Comet 67P, what, it's kind of duck-shaped? They're odd shapes, right? I crunched this particular um, plastic bag around my model and just taped it in so it came out as just any old weird shape that wasn't round. So here we go. This <laughs> is my comet on a stick. Um, there's all kinds of suggestions in the activity for other things you can use, basically whatever you've got around to give to the students, to give to your kids to play with this and make their models. So cotton balls, you can color it. Again, whatever you decide your model is going to be really good at showing and teaching about comets. So then the cool thing with the tail 
This is the part I had to bring something from home. Hold on. <laughs> and Nicole said she's not going to borrow this too. Oh yeah, I'm going to run over a bit. All right. So somebody can be the sun, and you need a hair dryer for that. So then you can hold up your comment on a stick, turn on your hair dryer full blast, and see what it does to the tail. So, <laughs> there you are with that. Um, and then, of course, so which of the two kinds of tails is my model showing? So which of the two kinds of comet tails interacts with the solar radiation, right, the solar wind? Um, one does, one doesn't. And so, for example, my model would be pretty good at showing that kind of tail, but, you know, so the ion tail, but the dust tail, eh, it's not even there. So after the groups build their comets and their models and talk about them a little bit, then they can evaluate them, um, tell what's good, what's bad, what's the strength of a particular model, where is it weak, how could we modify it then, change it, make it better, and come up with another model that's improved. So there's a little bit of engineering there in that sense that you, you, know, you go through these iterations Models don't just sit there; they, you know, they, um, they transform, mm -hmm. they grow, they change with new evidence coming out. So that's this is a very easy, fun um, activity. Again, good for middle school, but could be for just about anything, depending on how elaborate you wanted to get. And is really good at showing the limitations and strengths um, and the changing aspect of models, which. Um, students don't always get because you don't always talk about those things. Very cool. Um, that is my comment on a stick and again you can go so Wavelength is you can just go into Wavelength then search comment on a stick it'll come right up. It's just nasawavelength.org right? Sorry, yep nasawavelength.org. And we've put the link to this particular activity in the showcase app so if you're open to the Q&A you can switch over to the showcase and see that app and if you're listening after the fact uh, I'm uh, quite sure Richard will put Richard Drum will uh, put these in the show notes, or or, uh, or Viva Richard or Viva will be putting the show notes for us for three yeah. sixty five. Um, so I'm checking the tweet stream now uh, as the What's press the conference comment is mean? going on. And Guido, I totally understand if you want to mute us and listen to the press conference because you can listen to this later. <laughs> you don't have to listen to us simultaneously. Um, Elad says I never saw the duck. Looks more like a peanut to me. <laughs> Uh, Jeff Wag, hey! Uh, figured you guys would be more interesting in the press conference. Well, thanks. The science, I love the science, but we have the the education. Uh, I'm I'm hope I'm looking at the Twitter stream to try and find a newer image, and I'm not seeing it. Um, just we landed, clear signal. How? Uh, sorry, this is a tweet from Sarah Hurst, Planet Doctor. We landed, had clear signal. We got housekeeping and science data. Very good news. Uh, so that is, and it's complicated. <laughs> Alice uh, and Evold and Simi, we had uh, last, I think last week was our our early childhood show. Yeah, she was on the show last week. Uh, it's complicated to land on a comet <laughs> from yeah. Mark Stefan, one of the uh, com one of the scientists. Um, mm -hmm. Emily Lakdawalla confirms from uh, Ulamek. I apologize if I'm messing up these names. Lander is not anchored to the surface. We do not fully understand. So what they are talking about now is still speculation at this point. Um, the pictures that we've seen going around so far seem to be the most current ones. Uh, let me open up. Uh, first of all, if you uh, didn't see last night when uh, the lander separated from, from the Philae lander separated from uh, Rosetta first, oops, go this one first, it um, turned around and took a picture of Rosetta so you can see like there's Rosetta's one of its solar panels, there's the main body of the spacecraft, so that's its first postcard uh, for, for little Philae, and then Rosetta went ahead and took a picture of Philae on its way down to the comet, and they were, I know, this is the one that came up right in the middle of my glass, I was like, oh my god, guys, look! <laughs> uh, they could see clearly that the landing legs and the antennas had all deployed properly, and so that was a really... A good confirming photo. That a picture is cool. I know. I love it, it when really it is. It's so like other space out there doing its job. Amazing. <laughs> it's like look at me, look at me, look at me. And this was um, 
This is from Philae. Uh, I don't remember what distance above the surface this was. So this is above the surface of the comet. And then right before touchdown, uh, this picture was going around Twitter, but the source wasn't, we weren't entirely sure, but it looks like it's pretty sure this came from a screen capture of the live webcast and that this came from um, the surface right before touchdown. So those are the pictures that are going around on Twitter right now, as far as I can see. Fantastic. Um, as far as, uh, let's see, they're saying right now, tomorrow we may find we are still sitting on the surface, but in a slightly different position from where we first landed. So not only have we landed on a comet, mm. we seem to be scooting around on it. Um, so we'll be getting some, we'll be keeping an eye on that, I'm sure. Okay. Um, may have bounce. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting, very interesting things. Um, so, uh, so while that's going on, I'm continuing to make my little. So this is is not as much a useful model, more of a craft, um, more of a craft project. But it is a useful model. Wait. So first of all, where did you where did you get where do you get that? That I got right off the ESA website. Okay. Um, I again, the link is in the showcase app. So uh, check that out. I I'm pretty sure I just googled the Rosetta paper model because I saw somebody tweet it earlier and I didn't have the link from that tweet, so I just googled Rosetta Paper Model, and it'll be on the ESA website. Um, but I think it, I mean, it does give you an idea, so go ahead. How? <laughs> yeah, no, so can you hold it Hold it up again? Well, so first of all, you can get the general shape of the spacecraft. Right. And assuming that... Some of its components. To right? scale. Got some solar panels. This would be Rosetta. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> and this would be me. <laughs> <laughs> the little guys. Sticking uh, uh, his tongue out. Sticking his tongue out. <laughs> they have alternate faces too, so Rosetta could also have a really, really happy face. And Fiona awesome. can have a, a like, oh my god, what's happening face. <laughs> there's a camera and there's arms, so I'll, um, I'll eventually, I'll probably end up finishing it after the show and tweet pictures of it. That's okay. Um, and I would just say that, so this is a very engaging model, which I don't know if scientists, well, they do. I mean, we in a sense, depending on a, what you're going to use your model for. Mm -hmm. If you're going to talk to the public and show a model, like a visualization, you want it to be engaging somehow. You want it to be beautiful, inspiring, capture the imagination, or you're just going to lose your audience and you won't be able to share the science. So when students you know, are learning, if you don't have them engaged, you know, you're not going to be able to share the science either with them. So in a sense, you know, maybe, you know, a traditional, in a traditional science kind of way, this is a silly thing that's not really a model. But really it is because the beauty of this model is it's engaging, it's safe, it's, you know, someone can create it themselves, it's kid friendly, so they can interact with it well. Um, easy materials to construct, right? It's it's got lots of good strengths that you know maybe you have to get in that teacher space to really appreciate. Or yeah. parents, yeah. <laughs> um, so it I'm has actually that. lots of really good strengths to it. So, and of course the weaknesses, you know, are maybe there's some misrepresentation there. You know, they really don't have faces um, and other things, but. You can see the relationship to sort of that system of the, the main spacecraft and filet. So it really is a great model. Again, you have to look at what are you using your model for? Um, what do you want to teach with it? And who's the audience for the model? So, um, and you know what? The kids can all take this model home with them. Right. Which is also important, and I think actually and they can share it with others. So, yeah. it's, you know, it's it's really good. So let's see. Wait, I want to see more of it because I haven't done. I have to do this later. The um the anthropomorphizing of the spacecraft, I love, uh, and I saw some people tweeting about that earlier. Like, what what's with all the you know? Because um, Rosetta <laughs> and Philae, there are Twitter accounts of each craft um, that are tweeting in first person and I think the first time we really saw that happen successfully was the Phoenix lander on Mars. Yeah, I, I was just thinking of that too. That was the one that I think really kicked that off and mm -hmm. so people got personal, I mean we all know the spacecraft is not like sentient, right? We're not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> but it was really touching to, mm -hmm. you know, 
especially when it, it shut down. I mean, I'm pretty sure a few of us shed a tear <laughs> because you, you feel a personal connection. No. To something. And the yeah. graphics that they've put together for this mission are super adorable. Um, and, and the tweeting has been really, really awesome. So I think anthropomorphizing is definitely a good thing for getting people engaged. And I'm going to break this little hand because this is frustrating. I apparently don't have fine enough motor skills to pull. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, spacecraft don't have hands, but that's okay. All right. I, I am going to go ahead and make my model of a comet, which you guys have probably seen before, uh, especially if you watch um, the Wiggly Space Hangout, as I did do this one for... Um, what did I do this for? I did it for one of the Weekly Space Hangouts a while ago. Uh, so this is a, a physical analog of a comet. I'm going to make it in this bag here, and we can talk about the strengths and weaknesses as we go on. Um, and I'm, I'm also just yeah. comet bouncing. We may have landed twice. I'm just checking the tweet stream. So basically, um, any of you who are, watch, who are actually watching uh, can... Oh, wait who are actually watching can uh, give me an idea if I'm missing something important there, except, uh, oh, yeah. Mm. Here's the actual image of, hang on. Yeah, I was going to try to get this one along. This is like an, image too, of, but... an image of the scientist looking at the surface, <laughs> which is so freaking cool. Someone wow. just kind of stood over their shoulder and took a picture. Um, so you can, so thank you, Elad, for sending that along. Um, and <laughs> full press briefing tomorrow. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, full press briefing will happen tomorrow at 1400 Central European time, which is 1300 GMT. So, yeah, <laughs> figure it out for your local time zone from there. Um, I think we're six hours behind GMT, so that's... I can't do math in my head. I believe so, yes. 9 a.m. for us uh, in Central Time, Central Time in the U.S., so it uh, sounded like it was a really brief briefing, literally, um, and that they will continue with full press briefing when they know more. So, yay! Mm. Um, so we'll continue with our model comic. I was just doing this demo two nights ago at an elementary school. Um, one of our, I don't think we've had Katie Durbin on the show, have we? Mm, I don't think I so. Have. She's a, a, a professor here, and uh, we've worked together on science fair. Uh, and her daughter's school, she did an astronomy night. So I was like, oh, new comets, not realizing it was the perfect timing because <laughs> this is Monday night. Um, so uh, what I tell the kids is that uh, comets are made of a lot of the same types of stuff that we have here on Earth. And so I have a, a bag of dirt. I'm, I grabbed whatever was convenient in the resource center. So I have some dirt. So comets are made of dirt and rocks. Um, they're often actually called dirty snowballs. So I start off with some dirt. <laughs> and... Okay, here's my water bottle. Uh, comets are thought to have brought a lot of the water that we have here on Earth. Uh, Earth's formation was a very hot, intense process probably boiled off, uh, and, and being so close to the sun as it was, boiled off most of the volatiles, like water. Um, so it's, it's, it's likely that a lot of our water came from cometary impacts later on. So here is my water. And at this point, I ask everybody, what have I made? And they're like, it's mud! <laughs> we have mud, very exciting. <laughs> Uh, there are some other uh, chemicals in comets uh, that ew, that's mud um, are commonly found on Earth. One of them is ammonia, and so I have this. Uh, see how I've covered the labels? <laughs> this is I did this two years ago. We're still on the same bottle of glass cleaner yes. <laughs> in the STEM center. Um, <laughs> this has is glass cleaner with ammonia in it, so I'll spritz a little bit of that. There we go. So now it's it's smelly mud. Uh, at this point, um, there's usually uh, room for organics. And the things people typically use to represent molecules are corn syrup or soda, neither of which I have with me. Usually I have coffee. I figure that's close. It's got carbon in it, right? 
and I'll pour a little bit of that, but I don't have any of that today. So we'll just pretend I can like put some skin flakes in there, and that'll be my organic uh, molecules for this cup. Excellent. Creative and resourceful. I uh, yes. <laughs> I've I've done this demo lots and lots of different That's places. For teaching, yeah. I didn't actually put a link to this one because it's everywhere. <laughs> Look up Jai's comment, how to make a comment. Uh, lots of people have their own versions. I have a version from Dark Skies Bright Kids, since that's the group I work yeah, with. That's right. UVA. Uh, there's, a co there's a copy. On, there's one on Wavelength. Um, pretty sure the Pacific Science Center one, because one of the guys who, who, who works high up at the Pacific Science Center, I believe, is the person who came up with this demo, Doreen Haley's Comet. Haley's Comet's last approach, and I actually met him at a, a workshop um, yeah. a ago. So I was like, you're the guy! You're the guy who made the comet the first time. Yes, yeah. So uh, I have, now for the dry ice, dry ice is, uh, is uh, carbon dioxide, a um, solid form of carbon dioxide. And I'm going to use a glove because you don't want to, <laughs> you don't want... <laughs> Puppets! You don't want to burn your skin! So I'm going to be used... <laughs> I'm not a puppet. I'm not a very good puppet person. Uh, Come on, what's his name, Nicole? What? What's your puppet's name? Come on. Oh, somebody come up with a name. <laughs> the name him. Somebody come up with a name. Dragon, he's cute. All right. I'm very good at that. All right, so here's actually a uh, a chunk of dry ice for an example. So here's the. You can actually see the uh, what looks like smoke coming off of it. Uh, that is. Uh, mm -hmm. This ice is sublimating. It is turning directly from a solid into a gas, which is what all the ices in a comet do in space, because there's no air pressure. Um, this happens to do that at earthly air pressures as well, so it makes a really good example. Best way to do this is if you have uh, pellet dry ice. We do not have pellet dry ice. We got blocks of it, and so I crushed it up. Um, <laughs> Georgia heard me pounding in here. I was uh, using a mallet to crush it up into a powder. So I'm going to scoop some of that out. Um, let's see. Uh, don't mind me. Georgia, keep talking. <laughs> I was going to say, what's the best way to pound up dry ice? Mallet. But I learned that uh, the TSA will confiscate your mallet. So oh. don't fly with it. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good story. Yeah. Lessons yeah. learned. But yeah, you do have to talk a little bit about safety with this demo, or with this model, you should say. Hang on. But what it lacks in safeness, it makes up for totally in just awesome impressiveness. This is where in the cooking shows it does. This is, you prepare things earlier. this is definitely something you want to do for your classroom. You don't want them to do individually unless you have a lot of volunteers around to kind of keep an eye on everything. Okay. Um, so what I've done is I've tried to put some of the powdered dry ice in. Um, and since I don't have millions of years to wait around for it to solidify and come together due to uh, electromagnetic attraction and gravitational attraction. Hang on, I need more powder. Uh, the trick is to squish it. <laughs> Maybe more. All right. You're learning all the tips, tricks of the trade here. Uh, Ziploc bags. Ziploc bags, also an awesome thing. You've got so many good uses. Yes. And she's creating the comet Inside a Ziploc bag. Of course, don't don't seal the bag unless you want it to explode all over the place. <laughs> Another good tip. Good. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm just squeezing it, putting pressure on it. You kind of have to experiment a bit to find the right uh, ratio of dry ice to dirt and water. I think I don't have enough dry ice because I crushed it before broadcast and a lot of it uh, <laughs> sublimated. <laughs> um, Often you can get dry ice at a grocery store. We, I haven't found one around here, but we do have access to it from our science department. So here is nucleus of a comet. It is not duck-shaped. I was going to try and make a duck-shaped one, but I think I need more ice for it. Uh, it is dark. The surface of it is dark. Now, there's a lot of big chunks of ice. That's probably 
not terribly realistic, but really we're going to find out when we see the data from Chile uh, what the surface of a comet is, is really truly like. Um, but comets are actually quite dark. They're super dirty snowballs. Are you dating? Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. On the air, but go ahead. Hi, Dennis. Hey, hey. Oh. Listen, Nicole, she's making a comet. <laughs> you got to see it live next door. We're making a comment for the internet. <laughs> so, and what's happening is the little chunks of ice are actually sublimating out. Um, what that carbon dioxide did is it froze the water and the ammonia and the other volatiles and kept is keeping this dirt ball together. Um, this will eventually start to fall apart in my hand if I'm not careful. Uh, what it also does is actually whistling. I don't know if you can hear that. Yeah, that's cool. It's whistling. Um, would comets really whistle? I d you know what? We don't know. <laughs> Probably not. I mean, we wouldn't hear it because unless there's uh, enough material for sound to propagate around it, which there might be in the coma. I'm not sure. Uh, it's also starting to get a uh, shell of water ice because the um, the water ice, uh, the water vapor in uh, the air around it is kind of freezing to it as well. So it'll start to build up this like frosty covering. Um, so yeah, you want to do this as a demo for your for your classroom or your kids, or if you know there's a high helper to student ratio, you can mm -hmm. help them do their own as long as they've all got gloves. Um, we we have like a in DSBK we had a big plastic box of oven mitts <laughs> that we would just take with us. And we had the ratio was maybe three to one, um, so we could keep an eye on them when they had their their dry ice in their in yeah. their little little. Worry about hand. goggles with. It is recommended to use goggles. As you see, I'm not wearing goggles. I think glasses. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm wearing glasses. But glasses are good. Yeah. yeah, glasses are okay. Yeah. Um, so that's a very, I mean, this, this model shows an awful lot about the um, components, the structure of a comet, and how it really looks, at least much more than my crafty model. And you get the and little. You can talk little about little so jets. much more, right, with this model. You can get little jets as well. Um, this little, I mean, it's. Yeah, so it shows a little more about the processes going on. And so that's that material, that gas, that dust, that's going to form the coma and it's going to form the, the tails as well. And I can see it as a much more active kind of thing than just a, you know, a, a craft model. I'm going to bring it over and we can use your uh, blow dryer. <laughs> okay. BRB in it. Excellent. So here she comes. So, and even this model, even though you, there's so many things you can talk about with the dry ice, you can <laughs> still keep it as simple and just show a few features if you want. Okay, so wait. I'm just doing something like that. Everything in just fell over desk. Oh, well, that's all right. Okay. All right. Okay. So it's it's so intense. It's just blowing everything off of it. I was hoping we'd get more of a coma, but I didn't quite see that. You can see a little stuff going. It's definitely melting the water yeah, onto my glove. Low well, power and. Really it's not that exciting. When I pull it away, a lot of it comes off. Yeah. I think it's pushing it away so fast. You don't even see no. it. Okay. I gotta run back to my office. Now. No, my tissue paper streamers were much more okay, fine. effective that way. <laughs> so note to self. Yeah. So all models have their limitations. And um, sometimes simple is good. Sometimes it's worth it to go get the dry ice because it really is. Um, a really cool demonstration. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, also, I like this glove in particular because it's thought that uh, an asteroid or a comet was responsible for the demise of the dinosaurs. And the, ooh, and this is the dinosaur's revenge. <laughs> so that's a dinosaur. I thought it was. A I don't know, but I decided to call it a dinosaur. So I'm sorry, my paleontologist friends will, will yell at me. Um, we have a link in the Q&A from Jeff. I wasn't going to bring that up, Jeff, but about what happens if you're not careful with dry ice. If you are curious to hear what happens if you're not careful with dry ice, you can read Jeff's story 
uh, because I was there. <laughs> you were there. <laughs> and I'm partly responsible for the chaos that ensued. Uh, so <laughs> thank you for that, Jeff. Um, okay, let me look over the comments. Uh, we have a hi from Tatiana. We have um, the color looks very similar. Of course, the, the pictures we get are probably grayscale, but that's probably about close to the color. I think mine's more brown because it's potting soil, um, whereas I think those are more gray. Uh, Michael Jobin wonders about seismic vibrations on a comet. Uh, not sure. I know they talked some about magnetic field fluctuations, um, but don't know much else about that. Um, um, did, uh, um, I did see this. The, one of the Project Scientist shirt. I am uh, have been comment uh, Nathaniel Sanchez. Um, I'm gonna wait to write up my commentary about that. But there was a bit of uh, you can see the Twitter stream about that if if you're curious. Um, uh, like Nancy said, full press briefings tomorrow at two o'clock Central European, thirteen Universal Time, is the uh, the full uh, press conference. Um, and and uh, Guido uh, is reporting back from the from the recent press conference. Um, best to follow the Twitters. Nothing much new. Still very careful. Uh, big applause after mentioning that Philae may have bounced and therefore landed twice. So not only did we land on a comet, we landed twice on a comet today, <laughs> possibly. Um, so pretty on that. So it doesn't look like there were any new images. Or new news from um, the um, from the press conference, uh, other than they're keeping an eye on things, and we'll have more updates to come in the next few days. So um, keep on watching. Uh, I guess the hashtag Comet Landing. Keep on watching the ESA feed. Keep on watching the Rosetta and Phile uh, Twitter feeds. Um, I said Emily Lockdo Wallace got amazing good coverage. Uh, Alan Boyle at MSNBC has good coverage. Mm -hmm. Phil Plate's been tweeting. Uh, Katie Mack did some amazing tweeting last night when <laughs> most of the rest of us were asleep because <laughs> she's in Australia. Uh, so she covered those time zones. Uh, so yeah, a lot of great people are, are keeping everybody up to date. So thank you for that. Um, and I hope you guys, uh, if you can, if you are teaching or if you have kids or if you just want to show your coworkers some of these interesting comet models, um, either the ball and stick model, the dry ice model, or if you want to really get crafty, uh, you can send us your pictures of your of your little Rosettas and your little Philae Landers. Um, that would be pretty cool. Um, Excellent. Yeah. Do you have any other comments, Georgia, um, on comets or models? Um, not really. Other than to uh, even a drawing is a model. So again, if you really are just <laughs> short on materials and you want a quick fill for something. Um, you know, students can draw pictures and label, and that's a model there, and you can go through the same thing. You know, what's the strength, what's the weakness of the model, how can you make it better, um, what, like, three things do you think your model is showing about whatever it's modeling, comment, whatever it might be. So um, it can be very simple, or it can be very more elaborate and impressive, like the dry ice. So um, whatever, you know, fits whatever you're doing. Yeah, sounds good. That, that that is excellent. And thank you for pointing out that even the cute little artistic model has help, has helpful it's educational valuable. features. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> is it, it it amuses me, but I I don't well, do enough. Yeah, yeah, and that, and it's amusing. Mm -hmm. Why not make it amusing? <laughs> does he have a uh, different faces too? Sorry. Yeah, there's a there's the, there's the the sticky tongue face, and then there's the Oh, face. <laughs> I haven't finished cutting out yet. No, no my harpoon is not working. Oh, my harpoons are not working. All right. <laughs> I think I'm going to clean the dirt and dry ice off my desk and, and get on with my day. Thank you guys again for joining us, even while the USA press conference is going on. <laughs> Go out there and find out more about comets. Hope you learned a bit more about comets, a little more, a little more about uh, models in the educational process, and uh, yeah, ways that you can uh, follow the Rosetta mission as it keeps going. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's all we have. And uh, what is next week's show? You want to recite your the litany of yeah, the litany of shows. So Friday mm -hmm. at noon Pacific will be the weekly space hangout. Fraser Kane's hosting that. Uh, I'm going to try and be on again this week. 
Um, last week I, I, I squeed with joy over the uh, Alma image of, of uh, planets forming. Um, but we will be ca recapping the space news from this week, which I'm sure will heavily feature the Rosetta results. Um, there was dancing last week, wasn't there? There's a <laughs> gif of me dancing on the internet. Thanks, Richard. <laughs> um, and then uh, Monday is Astronomy Cast. I don't know yet what their show topic will be, but uh, the Cosmic Quest news tonight, and I'll probably have that in there if that's up. So Astronomy Cast happens also at noon Pacific on Monday, and then back around to Wednesday, uh, Learning Space, we'll be talking with Sarah Mitchell about family science activities at NASA. They've done some really cool family science activities. Family science mean, doesn't just mean kids, it means kids and parents uh, working together, uh, kids and caretakers working together um, awesome. to learn some new science, so we'll be talking with her about that program and where that's going uh, next week. So... Pretty cool. Okay, a lot happening. We have comet updates next week too. Maybe. Uh, we'll probably have more comet updates. We'll update you guys. Why not? Of course. Or you can update us if you if we miss things. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So thank you guys for watching, um, and we'll see you next week. Yeah, this was fun. Thanks, Nicole. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Georgia. Bye. Bye. Mm.